this to Runa here, and I have an important message for you. We're living in a turbulent times. Conflict and social unrest seems to be everywhere, and rapid technological changes are only adding to the culture of upheavals. Uncertainty about the future, about ourselves, loom large in the collective consciousness of humanity. But is there a realistic path towards liberation, peace and happiness for us all? Well, yes, according to myself and the co-author of the book, Story of Boxes, Nicholas Haynes, we feel so. The issue is that we all have tendency to think in boxes, mentally placing people's ideas and even objects like underpants into rigid categories. Some of these categories or boxes are good. They are a source of joy and comfort. Others are bad, responsible for creating immense pain, isolation and division in the world. And others, they're just plain ugly. Once you become aware of the boxes that rule your personal life, the, you can break out of the box-based thinking and live a life that is freer and happier. You are no longer caged in by the walls of mental boxes. By investigating our unconscious and conscious boxes and sharing inspirational stories and easy-to-grasp examples, this sometimes even funny book gives you a new way of thinking about reality. It explores some of humanity's most salient and enduring bosics, including genders, race, sexuality, religion and class, and gives you a key to unlock the boxes in your own mind. If you want to know more, please go to www.nomoreboxesmovement.com forward slash the book. And now let's continue with our podcast. You're listening to the Chainsmakers podcast, where we share tips, insight, tools, and stories from other Chainsmakers designed to motivate you to become the change you want to see in your world. Make sure you join our Chainsmakers community at runamagnus.com forward slash podcast. And now, this is your time to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Good morning, it's Runa here with yet another guest at the Changemakers podcast. This time we have Susan Anderson, a, a truly an expert when it comes to how to identify our feminine and masculine energies inside of us and how can we how can we live authentically as who we are, no matter which gender we are, but really in a space that being accepted. That's really how I got everything that you're doing, Suzanne. And welcome to the Changemakers podcast. I just go directly into the conversation here because I was okay. so intrigued that I was looking at what you've been doing. And I think, wow, she talks about feminine and masculine energies. And, and you talk about that, you know, in a way outside of the box way because we have both men and women have both, Right. Right. Yeah, right. And thank you. Thank you, Runa, for inviting me into this conversation you're having about change makers. And I would say what intrigues me or what interests me the most is how do we equip change makers, include myself, the operating system, I'm going to call it that, the inner operating system that will let us really sustainably be the ones that can be the agents of change on our planet right now. And if I look at it like that, if I bridge between what I do and what you're doing is you're inviting the conversations about what does it mean to really be a change maker right now? And I would say, if we don't have an operating system, a way of thinking, feeling and moving in the world in our bodies, that includes all of the feminine and masculine aspects of ourselves, we're not going to be a match for the challenges of these times. Mm. It's sort of that simple from my point of view. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You talk, you would, before I press the record button, you were saying something really, really interesting around how we are not going to be seeing the masculine and feminine. I, well, I like to put it into the box of being either masculine or feminine. We're not going to see the whole gender thing 10 years from now in this, with the same eyes as we are doing today. Tell me right. more. What is your vision for that? Yeah, that's totally, I, it's already in the process, I think, of morphing yeah. right now. But yeah. I want to make the distinction between 
feminine and masculine essences inside oneself and male yeah. and female gender. So yeah. the, the, one of the challenges I've had is languaging around what it is I'm trying to describe. And when I first started doing this work, which the research itself was 15 years ago is when I began, I used the words web to speak about the feminine and laser to speak out the masculine because I wanted to try to get it outside of gender. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't really adequately capture what I was trying to convey. So I'm back with feminine and masculine again, or yin and yang, we could say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. inside of women and men. So I think the way we, what we, what I don't think is going to go away is that there are these two prime forces that yin and yang, right, that move together in an elegant way to create life. Mm -hmm. And those forces, I imagine, will, you know, who knows in millions of years from now, but, you know, will be the dancing forces inside us in the future. But I don't think we will be constrained inside the gender identity of I am a man and I am a woman, you know, the, in the way that we have right now. Yeah. But right now, we are in, we are, let's say, a homeo, homo sapiens in transition. So we actually, I think, what, what I'm interested in is how to help, my, my own research has been with women in the last 15 years, but how to help women especially reconnect with the feminine ground of being and bring that together with the healthy masculine for something really different. Yeah. And, and tell me more. Tell me more about that journey. Um, well, what our research has shown is that over, if we, and we go back and, and I lay some of this out in more detail in the book, but we can, let me just do a quick pass through time to say that we have for the last 5,000 years been inside a masculine model of wholeness. Yeah. That's been a paradigm. That was not wrong. That was evolution's move forward. That's how yeah. evolution moved. Prior to that, there was 50,000 years of what we call a more feminine, mother-based, earth-centric uh, worldview. We call that the first feminine epoch. Yeah. So we could say we've had this 5,000 years. Well, understandably, therefore, let's we'll say then what women have learned how to and even identified their own sense of well-being or wholeness inside a masculine model. In my view, that has meant the what went in the background was the feminine mm -hmm. aspect of ourselves. And it went in the background in terms of the valuing, even though there was a period of time, let's say, in culture where we were at home doing the domestic work and it's apparently feminine. That's not what I would call necessarily really the feminine ground of being just much more about how we value ourselves as women. And that has to shift now. And that let's say we are what I, what my own research would, would reveal or did reveal was that the old codes, these masculine codes, we can call them patriarchal mm -hmm. are literally installed in the body. They're, they're not just ideas. They're all the way down in the DNA. And so to, to shift to bringing in more of the healthy feminine and and getting the healthy masculine online means we actually have to uninstall the old codes yeah wow that sense? yeah well, it sounds like a huge task well it is a task and that's actually uh, it's great you said that <laughs> because it's one of the challenging things in, in the work that i do and that's why I'm, i love that i'm speaking to this audience because yeah. One of the things uh, back along the way, the Dalai Lama said when he was at a conference in Vancouver, he said the the world will be saved by the Western woman. Now, I don't think he, and in fact, I'm sure he didn't mean it was just about having more women in positions of influence. What he meant was if women wake up to all of who they are, that is the feminine and the masculine, they can really be the ones that are the change makers. Mm -hmm. But this does take work and so you have to care about something more in other words you have yeah. to have has to be a for the sake of what would i be willing to do the work because this is these codes are in the unconscious they're in the body and they're old they're not only your own family of origin codes about how you value yourself how you are in relationship how you are in the world mm -hmm. but they also come from the culture this 5,000 years yeah. they also come down epigenetically through your lineage so that's to say we have to be willing to turn toward the old code mm -hmm. and 
find out how it got, what, what is the, the meaning making there? How did we see ourselves and how can we shift that? So what I'm hearing here is to wake up and really ask yourself the question, well, okay, I am part of a culture that is 5,000 year old and my DNA is part of that. That doesn't mean that it has to continue that way. Right. In and fact, it, I can, as a conscious being, I can make a choice in right. becoming the change that I want to see then yeah. in the world without bringing all that unconscious right. DNA with me into the future. Am I following you? Absolutely. That's yeah. beautiful. What you're saying because what you're saying is, and this is, again goes back to the Dalai Lama, it's about the awakening of consciousness. Like our, yeah. we can know the, the quote from Einstein that we all know it. It's, you know, we can't solve the problems of today with the consciousness yeah. that created yesterday. Yeah. Well, what he's really saying, he's a developmentalist as I am. You know, it's a, it's, he's saying we have to develop again. When I would say the work that, when I started out doing this work 15 years ago, I had a kind of simplistic view of what I was going to do of feminine and masculine. Yeah. And, that women clearly needed more connection to the feminine. They'd become one of the boys that needed to shift. They were suffering. I don't think I had, it took me a couple of years of uh, working in programs and with women to realize that actually the issue was developmental. It was like we had assumed we were all grown up inside this masculine model. And the shift that was going to have to happen was actually turning on the developmental tap again, just like when, you know, you crawl and then you start to walk and then you have to speak. These are all developmental nexus points. And I think we are, I think women are in particular, and actually I think it is women and men. Um, my own research has been with women, but I think we're in the midst of a profound rite of passage mm. that is actually asking us right now because of the complexity of these times and the problems we're facing and yeah. saying you have to grow again you actually have to awaken consciousness more have more available and i would say the feminine capacities are simply needed now we need yeah. to know how to collaborate and connect and use our emotional intelligence and yeah. use our embodied intuition and take care of our own physicality and learn how to have empathy you know, these are not just nice ideas, they're actually necessary. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's interesting what you're saying. I wholeheartedly agree with you. These We're talking about both men and women, but it is that co-creation, that collaboration, that energy that you're putting in there. That's what we're talking about that is needed, no matter which gender is actually executing it. Am I right there? Or is that how oh, you're looking at it? Yeah, absolutely. I think... Mm -hmm. The conversations that we can be in together as men and women, as beings, mm. is the conversations and the actions we can actually take together mm. is the way forward. I actually mm. think that's also a feminine yeah. I've like been, I, 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I've been, for decades, I've been, you know, very passionate gender equality advocate and, and been sitting on various global advisory boards that have to do with uh, gender equality. But it has one thing that has been really troubling me in, in one way or another lately has been the, the spotlight of putting the rise of the feminine into just that's the, the whole solution if it's more women doing things. Right. And and you, you pointed out something really interesting and, and beautiful regarding it's both gendered, but it is those qualities that we see as being feminine that we're talking about. Yeah, and I would say it isn't even one of the things that's troubling me a little bit too is you know, I think it's not troubling me. Let me say I think it's a step forward is the conversation yeah. about feminine leadership, I'll put that in quotes. Yeah. Because actually I think there is a way of leading that's requiring healthy feminine and masculine mm -hmm. together. Now it's true that the weak element or the element that's gone into the background has been the feminine, but the research that I did over 15 years was gave, made it very clear that feminine and masculine co-arise. Mm -hmm. If you look at the yin yang symbol, for example, right? There is, you know, the, there's a cross pollinating going on here between yeah. the two. Yeah. And that's what we actually found was that you couldn't, look at one of those energies without 
the other. So in other words, and actually one of the things we discovered was there's an active expression of the feminine and a more passive expression. And there's an active expression of the masculine and a more passive. That was very helpful because then we could actually start to see what it means to heal those aspects. But ultimately something really new starts to happen when the healthy feminine mm. comes online with the healthy masculine. Now maybe I can give you an example of what Please I mean do. here. Yeah. Yeah. So the first polarity in our own system, it begins with something that I would call yin yin, the feminine that is very static and still we could use the mother archetype there. So it's, you know, all loving, connected to the your own value and sufficiency, the ground of your own being, you're in your body in the best case scenario, you're you're uh, able to connect with others. You feel this ease and collaboration. You don't, you're not as competitive with other women. So all of that sort of happens here at the mother. The other end of that first polarity is the, the hero energy. And that's a very young, young energy. That's that masculine that wants to act of masculine. I want to yeah. make things happen. Agency, penetrating, set a goal, achieve it, set boundaries. It's that sort of energy. So let's say you have a wound or you have a, a you're over focused in the hero. You've become one of the, the men. You have this dominator way of being in the world. That's your shadow of that energy. If you just deal with that, if in other words, you say, okay, I won't work as much. Mm -hmm. I'll try to balance things out by getting a better, you know, I'll only work seven hours a day instead of 15 or something. But the other end of that polarity is my own sense of self-worth and my own sense of, the value of my own being. If I haven't addressed that end, this won't last. Guaranteed, you'll there'll be the person will fall into a depression, or you know, they will have their sense of identity will just lead them to, you know, into uh, addictive behaviors. If the two don't aren't dealt with at the same time, or you just deal with one of these masculine or feminine essences with just behavioral strategies, mm. the healing doesn't actually happen. But when you work with both together, something profound really starts to occur. And that's my interest is that we have the possibility of accelerating our mm -hmm. awakening. Now, I don't think we have, I mean, evolution is going to do this anyway. The feminine's coming in. It's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Some of us recognize we have a limited window here of time. Yeah. We're going to have to plan it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Are we then, and I say we, because I resonate with this, would you say, in, when you're saying it will happen, are we getting impatient and are we pushing something that we might not need to be pushing as much as it's just going to happen naturally? Well, I think it's the opposite, actually. I would say it wants to happen just yeah. like we've seen the other, we're in, most historians and futurists would agree we've had six waves of consciousness and culture yeah. since the beginning of the human species. Yeah. And we're right at the cusp of the seventh wave launching from the yeah. postmodern to what some people are calling the interval wave. And whenever we are between two waves and each one of these waves, by the way, there's an increase in consciousness an increase in complexity and an increase in capacity or even a leadership model, where you are in the world. Most people would agree that this wave that's coming in now requires the feminine, for the reasons I've already said. But always in those transition times, it's very iffy, whether you'll have a dark age or a renaissance, right? Whether Which way it'll go. So I would say, we and, and by the way, one thing that's very interesting some brilliant research was done in the 1950s by a man named Fred Pollock, and he was looking after the Second World War at what cultures and countries were able to reorganize towards the positive after so much destruction. And, and he found the one lone causal factor that made a difference in those transition times was a small group of population that were able to hold a positive vision of the future while in the midst of enormous breakdown. Wow. So this is to say, I think it is essential that some of us are accelerating our capacity to be awake and conscious, leading this movement, actually, I say on the frothy edge of evolution, that can really be in the surf of these times with the operating system 
that can handle the intensity of this kind of a change process where I think we're in the midst of. Wow. Suzanne, that is profound. Tell me, where can people, our listeners, where can they come and learn more about what you're doing in your book, your research, and, and how can they contact you? Yeah, thank you. Well, the book is called The Way of the Mysterial Woman, Upgrading How You Live, Love, and Lead. A mysterial, M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-A-L, just to say is a word I came up with because I couldn't find a word to express what I was seeing in women, these ways of being that were emergent. Mm. And I say more about where the name came from in the book. And then, so my website is mysterialwoman.com. And one thing that you might be interested in, and you could, on the website, people can do a little quiz that I've created. It's a simple quiz where you can actually assess your own connection to the feminine and masculine in yourself. Uh -huh. you know, where, the way that I've identified two polarities, I have five different archetypes that connect to different aspects of expression. Oh, that is interesting. And you just go so, to your website to get to yeah, do that. Website, yeah. you'll get that. And then you can go to also mysteriowoman.com slash beliefs. And then you can get to this through my website also. So, yeah. but this is, will give people the five encoded limiting beliefs that our research showed after, you know, we did work with hundreds of women in our university programs. Yeah. And th these were like the, the consistent beliefs that kept showing up that were the old pattern. And women can see, you can see if you recognize them. And then we also have the liberating beliefs. So you can see what the possibility is for, of the new code. Oh, wow. All right. Definitely going to do that because that sounds like a helping tool to take you from what we call right. writing our, the book, the story of boxes, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That sounds like a helping tool to take you from an ugly box to a, a good box. A hundred percent. Yeah. Ooh. It's recognizing the ugly box you're in. Yeah. So the do the work of liberating yourself and being, as you said, the change you want to see in the world. That's yeah. beautiful. Suzanne, thank you so much for being a guest. And thank to you. our listeners, please go to the website and check out in the show notes all the information you go directly to Suzanne's website and her social media platforms. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Was this podcast of value for you? I sure hope so. If so, feel free to share the love and give us your generous review on iTunes or Stitcher. And remember that you can always go to runamagnus.com to find out more about the changemakers and how we can help you drive the change you want to see in